The design of the primary structure of an airframe begins with establishing the air loads it will experience in service. These vary mainly with airspeed and the amount of lift demanded of the lifting surfaces to add the range of manoeuvres flown by the aircraft. The airspeed versus load factor, or VN diagram, is a concise representation of the close set of boundaries that surround all the loading conditions the aircraft is expected to withstand. The algorithm for drawing up this flight envelope is usually set out by the certification document that defines the initial airworthiness requirements. Here, we will consider the specific procedure defined in the ALSA CS23, the FAA Sporting CFR23, and other certification documents follow the same or very similar principles. <clears throat> in this video, we quickly review the anatomy of a typical VN diagram, we look at its implementation in ADR5, and we consider how representative a FAR 23 VN diagram may be of the actual loads encountered by an airframe in service. A VN diagram, such as this one, is actually two diagrams on top of one another. The effects of manoeuvre loads, or the manoeuvre envelope, yellow dashed line here, are superimposed on the effects of gust loads, or the gust envelope, shown in blue dashed dots here. Let's start with the defining features of the manoeuvre envelope. Specifically, let's begin in the origin of the diagram with the positive stall line. This is the maximum normal load factor that the aircraft is capable of achieving through the deflection of its control surfaces. For any given airspeed, Increasing the CL, and therefore the load factor N, is only possible up to this line, where CL max is reached and stall will follow. The load factor is simply the ratio of the normal accelerating resultant force acting on the aircraft and its unaccelerated weight, which peaks when the lift coefficient maxes out. So N max is the maximum achievable lift over weight. Now, with increasing equivalent airspeed, the maximum achievable load factor increases, but at a value denoted VA, or manoeuvre speed, it reaches the limit load factor permitted by the certification requirements documents, for example, CS23 paragraph 23337, 3.8 in this case. In other words, once you have exceeded the manoeuvre speed, a full deflection of the control surfaces if they have sufficient authority, may cause the airframe to exceed the limit load factor. A similar logic applies to the negative G store line 0 to G on the diagram here. Now, the store curves are typically closed off at the 1G or minus 1G point, as in the area to the left of these point, uh, uh, points, the aircraft is not capable of generating sufficient lift to support its weight. This is literally what a, a subunity load factor means, even in steady level flight. Somewhat colloquially, the corresponding speeds are often referred to as stall speed, normal and inverted, although we must place inverted commas around these because technically, as this very di diagram may explain, you can stall an aircraft at any speed if you exceed its maximum lift coefficient. Other significant speeds that determine the shape of both envelopes are the design cruise speed, VC, and the design dive speed, VD. While VC is, of course, related to the operationally most favorable speed of the aircraft, for example, the speed that maximizes its range, this certification value of the cruise speed must be chosen quite carefully because airworthiness requirements such as CS23-335, establish a series of quite complicated constraints and relationships between VC, VD, wing loading, and much else. When choosing VD, the designer must also bear in mind the various air elasticity related issues of high speed flight. See, for example, the stipulations in CS23-629 such as that any rational analysis used to predict freedom from flutter, control reversal and divergence 
must cover all speeds up to 1.2 VD. Let us look at gust loads now. These are caused by rising or sinking columns of air which the aircraft might penetrate, with the result being a temporary increase or decrease, respectively, of the angle of attack, <clears throat> and thus the load factor. The gust-related load factor increases linearly with airspeed, which is why we see gust lines on the diagram, emanating from the zero one point. CS2333 requires that we account for positive up and negative down gusts of 50 feet per second <clears throat> or 15.24 meters per second at VC at altitudes between sea level and 6,096 meters or 20,000 feet. Point C and F on the diagram indicate the load factor values calculated for plus or minus 50 feet per second respectively at this speed and this gives us the first pair of gust lines. CS23341 tells us how to calculate the gust load factor as a function of airspeed. Similarly, positive and negative gusts of 25 feet per second at VD must be considered at altitudes below 20,000 feet, which yields the next pair of gust lines. Finally, all four lines are trimmed at VC and VD as appropriate, and the endpoints of the positive pair and the negative pair are connected with straight lines, as per the last paragraph of 2333. With all the key constraints and landmark points in place, a complete flight envelope can be drawn up, shown as the shaded area here. This is done by taking the more conservative of the manoeuvre and gust envelopes at each point in the end space. ABRPI does allow this construction work automatically, but if you're drawing your own diagram or writing your own code, you may wish to look out for a few gotchas. An example is the tricky point around A, where if the 50 foot per second gust line does not intersect the stall curve, you have to extend the latter until it does. The abscissa of the intersection point is VB, also known as the maximum gust intensity speed. This speed is noteworthy because above it, the strongest expected gust, 50 feet per second in this case, but may have to be assumed as high as 66 feet per second for commuter category aircraft, could cause the aircraft to store. A hat tip to Snorri Goodmanson for pointing out in his GA aircraft design book that this corner does not appear in the, exam, the example diagram shown in part 23, but may well be a feature of aircraft with low wing loadings. Not all structural limitations of an airframe are captured in a VN diagram. Asymmetrical air loads and landing loads are notable exceptions. Some structural limitations seen on aircraft placards are not due to VN diagram violations. For example, flap deployment at high altitudes may be prohibited simply because the manufacturer did not apply for this condition to be permitted. They may not have seen a sufficiently compelling need to certify it. We are largely concerned with limit loads here, but structural design also requires fatigue calculations. For these, you may need to consider loading spectra too. See, for example, FAA Advisory Circular AC23-13A, Fatigue, Failsafe and Damage Tolerance Evaluation of Metallic Structures for Normal Utility, Acrobatic and Commuter Aircraft. I always keep a copy on, on my bedside table, which sets out acceptable means of showing compliance on this aspect with 14 CFR Part 23. First, we import the necessary ABR PI modules. The VN diagram generator lives in the airworthiness module. We'll also need code for modeling the atmosphere.
Next, we define the inputs of the actual example. In general aviation aircraft design, applied methods and procedures, Snorri Goodmanson puts forward a test case, a hypothetical aircraft with lightly loaded wings, designed to stretch an engineer's ability to produce more interesting VN diagrams. We will use this here, and we define it through a set of dictionaries, which we use to instantiate an object of the Certification Specifications class. Certification Specifications were designed to be broadly analogous to the Aircraft Concept class, to make it easier to do both constraint analysis and VN calculations on a tentative concept. So we'll have a similar set of dictionaries as inputs, though some can be left blank if, like here, we only do the VN analysis. Next, basic geometry and the maximum takeoff weight are specified via the design definition dictionary entry. We specify key aerodynamic performance figures expressing the ability of the aircraft to generate lift in the design performance dictionary. Next we specify the type of propulsion system. This is not specifically needed for the VN diagram here. It is required simply for consistency with other classes. We set the atmosphere we want to work on by instantiating an object of the atmosphere class. For consistency with Goodmanson's example, let's simply have a zero offset ISA here. Now, on to the CS brief dictionary. In addition to the target cruise speed, we need to specify the dive speed, VD in not equivalent airspeed, the speed which, when exceeded during the dive, may result in buffeting, excessive vibration, damaging flutter, or loss of control authority. Should dive speed not be specified or be outside of the regulatory requirements, VD defaults to the minimum possible value as permitted by CS23. We also need to state the flight conditions where we want to draw up the diagram, specifically the altitude and the fraction of the maximum takeoff weight defined earlier, where we want to generate the diagram. Diagrams are typically generated for several combinations of these figures, more on which shortly. We'll use sea level and the full maximum takeoff weight here. We also need to pick a category, CERT CAT, as defined by CS23. We will use normal in this case, designated by the category identifier norm. The other categories are utility, commuter and aerobatic. The magnitude of the manoeuvring loads, CS23337, depends on this choice. For example, aerobatic aircraft must be designed for a positive limit load factor of 6, whereas the manoeuvring N need not be greater than 3.8 in the normal and commuter categories. Now for the main event. We plot the flight envelope for this aircraft using the flight envelope met method, including in the certification specifications class. It takes some basic sizing parameters and generates a diagram. It returns a dictionary containing the coordinates of all the labelled points. These are also listed in the legend of the diagram. The example discussed here applies to a single altitude weight configuration combination. Sea level, maximum takeoff weight, clean. VN diagrams are typically drawn up for a range of such combinations, and different combinations may be critical for different components of the aircraft. For example, the minimum flying weight may be critical for structural component size for inertial loads, such as engine pylons, or various parts of the internal secondary structure, supports, equipment mounts, and so on. Let's look at some real numbers. A Wichita State University team working with the FAA analyzed data from over 11,000 flights of six Beach 1900D twin turboprops during typical operational usage by a commuter airline. The report is a treasure trove of charts such as this one, showing maximum indicated airspeeds over each of those flights against the maximum operating speed of the 1900D. With the exception of a handful of cases, the fleet clearly stayed below the barber pole speed 
marked by the red line. The authors of the report also estimated the gust velocities encountered by the six turboprops in cruise. From the point of view of the VN diagram algorithms prescribed by part 23, this is a reassuring picture because the data falls comfortably into the minus 50 to plus 50 feet per second gust speed range stipulated at cruise speed. In fact, most of the data is contained even within the dive speed gust range of minus 25 to 25 feet per second. Let's now look at the actual load factor versus speed observations recorded on the Beechcraft commuters involved in this study. Here is a cloud of VN points recorded over about 1.5 million nautical miles of airline operations. And here is the bulk of this cloud on top of an ADRPI generated VN diagram based on some rough guesses at some of the key parameters of the 1900D. Clearly, the load factors are comfortably contained within an estimated flight envelope, except for some of the low speed data. Now, this is a VN diagram generated for the maximum takeoff weight of the beach, at which these speeds fall outside of the store boundary. If we draw up the same diagram for 70% of the maximum takeoff weight using ADRPI's weight fraction dictionary entry, the store speeds fall to the point where the entire VN data is within the envelope, with a corresponding drop in the maneuvering speed. Now don't take this quick cartoon as anything more than a guess, but it does hint at the VN diagram put together according to the recipe included in part 23 being comfortably conservative. Here endeth our quick review of what a VN diagram is and how you can generate one in a matter of seconds in ADRPI. Needless to say, please don't trust the word and codes of strangers you found on the internet with the structural sizing of anything that really matters. There is no substitute for doing your own due diligence through the numbers. But I hope you'll find ADRPI's VN diagram generating capability useful for some quick back of a laptop calculations. Happy designing.